All right, what is up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris and today I am back with another video here. Well, uh, that was a very frustrating game from the Flyer standpoint. Um, not much offense, 20 shots on net for this game. Um, just a, a dud, if, if that's, that's really what I can call that. Um, after scoring 25 goals in the first six games of the season, after playing some good hockey, um, where you have three games and four nights and you're missing, still missing, one of your best defensemen in Ryan Ellis. Calgary's also playing very well. They've had a five-game win streak. Everything else has gone right for them. They haven't, you know, haven't played without a lead, all this other stuff. You'd have to think the Flyers have a game where they don't necessarily do anything. Um, that was the case tonight. Lines and everything were the same as last game. Uh, Drew Curie, Konechny, Farabee, Broussard, Atkinson, Limblah, Blanc, and JVR, Thompson, Brown, McEwen. So Albi Cabell's out for a second game in a row. Uh, Provi, Braun, Sanheim, Risto, Yandel, Sealer, Carter Hart, and Nett for this one. Um, there's going to be a couple things I'm going to talk about in this video. Uh, the game itself against Calgary, the 4 0 loss, um, the Flyers' second period. As the season's gone on, their second periods have been trending in pretty much the wrong direction. Um, and then, obviously, the road trip itself. So, let's get on with the game first, because obviously, let's get this out of the way. Obviously, it's the pretty sore, you know, sour topic of this video. Um, you know, first period, it was a pretty boring period, if I'm being honest with you. Uh, shots were 8-4 Calgary after the first. Nothing much for, for really either team. It was a very even matched period. Um... Both teams had had one power play each, you know, a couple chances. That was it, really, for, for both teams. Um, Flyers had some good plays uh, off, you know, as Calgary was getting through the zone, through the neutral zone. Flyers had a couple good couple good defensive plays. Uh, Braun had a nice stick, a good throw. Um, the Flyers' really best chance came from Atkinson. It was robbed off a shot that came out to the slot. Braun ended up keeping the puck in and just fired it. Atkinson made a really uh, nice play to just get the puck right to the net. Flames had a surge at the end of that period. It was probably the best offensive shift in the first period for both teams, and it was late in the you know last 45 seconds. Hart had a couple good saves, stayed sharp. First period ends, still no score. That 45-second kind of burst definitely carried over for Calgary. Um, they just absolutely dominated the Flyers. Um, the Flyers didn't have a shot on net until around the eight minute mark I'd say of the second period and it was from Patrick Brown and it was a slap shot from way out it was nothing it was just just they, they, they couldn't get anything going I noticed a lot very early in the first period and as the second period was going on they were dumping the puck in well Jacob Markstrom who's listed at like 6'2 or something like that he definitely looks bigger and he's huge um he was just stopping every puck that went back there flames would get it quick up up the ice break right through the Flyers just could not get anything going and I'm thinking to myself, why do you keep dumping the puck in? Why? Like, I feel like the Flyers have been a very good team this year, and we've seen it. They scored off the rush when they have those little passes where they get the three on two, or they get the, you know, they get the two on one chance or whatever. Or they able to, they're able to create plays like that from breaking out of the zone. But the problem is they couldn't get out because Calgary is a very good team, keeping the puck in the zone. They they're just all over you, and that's exactly what they did tonight. Um, Flames get a power play here, one nothing. tip in front. I mean, the Flyers kind of just kind of sat there and, and just waited for them. Lawton made a play where he ended up moving. Sealer didn't pick up Monaghan. It was just a perfectly placed tip in front, one nothing there. Fourth line generated the first shift, um, or the first shot, I should say, pretty good shift. Then the Flyers get a power play. They really didn't do much with it. AV switches up the lines. You see Limblom with Lawton and Konechny. They That was definitely the best shift of the second period for the Flyers. Um... Drew had a shot on a rush chance. JVR ended up missing the rebound. Um, Flames get a power play. Very weak call there on Drew. I mean, it was just a not, it's just a bad call. And you're thinking to yourself, of course, when the Flyers get a very good shift, they get some offensive pressure, then they get a weak call against them, and they ended up killing that one off. Shots were 16-5 Calgary in this period. 24-9 um, after two. And the Flyers had more puck possession in the third. Um, it, but it wasn't anything crazy. Everything was really to the outside. I mean, by the time they were getting their looks and, and that was much, I mean, they, they really didn't do much in this game offensively. Um, obviously three games and four nights, they didn't necessarily look that energized in the later stages of the game against Vancouver. 
and going into this game, they looked a little slow. And again, playing with all that travel and things like that. And, um, again, it was the same lineup as it was against Vancouver. The only switch was all Big Bell in that game. So McEwen, uh, excuse me, not McEwen, Brown ends up playing again and, and things like that. So look, it, it wasn't great. 2-0 um, for the Flames. They ended up getting another one. Um, beautiful play. And it's just like, it's so unfortunate because Provorov has the play where like, if the puck's in his skates, and I don't understand what Braun was doing on this play. He just threw it to the corner. I mean, just just like, it, I don't know, it wasn't aimlessly. He was trying to get it out of the way. Like, it wasn't like he was he did it accidentally. But it, like, it's like, I, I, I understand what you're doing. You're trying to just clear it, but you just threw it to an area where the Flames can just go and get it right, right back again. I mean, it really didn't put the Flyers in any better of a ch- spot than they were seconds prior. So, he just throws it to the corner. They sent it in front, oh, a little tic tac co, you know, like between the legs pass, you know, just beautiful. And Kachuk scores. And after that, I mean, that was it. I mean, that was that was pretty much the, uh, you know, pretty much the dagger for this one. Um, Flyers ended up getting a power play late, couldn't really get much going. Um, Backlund would get an empty netter, and then good drill would add one in the last couple of minutes. If I'm going to look at takeaways from this game, um, Obviously, again, your third game in four nights, you're missing Ryan Ellis. Uh, you only had 20 shots on that, which wasn't great. You, you just could not do anything offensively. I think it was more of just the way that, the way that, one, the way the Flames were playing. They are a good hockey team. I mean, they're 6 1 and 1 right now. They're, they've won six in a row. They haven't, again, they've been getting great goaltending. Um, Markstrom just takes up everything, which is something that is very hard he's just a hard to shoot against like you see it in the plays where the flyers have a rush chance or um especially in the second period you could see it when Giroux had that chance and jvr ended up missing on the rebound like you see how big markstrom is i mean he takes up the entire net another thing is they don't give you much in the offensive zone penalty kill same thing um they were just all over the flyers tonight they they they, they had the flyers hemmed in they couldn't do much offensively again and dumping the puck was an issue because the Flyers couldn't get there. Markstrom would knock it down. Flames would come right back up. It was just a whole mess, and that's why the Flyers ended up losing this game 4 nothing. They got shut out for the first time this year. Now, as for the other things, the road trip, right? Four out of a possible six points. You go 2-1-0. Two, two, one oh. the, the road trip showed a lot of good things. The one thing that wasn't great this road trip was their second period. It wasn't necessarily great in the four-game homestand either. Um... It was better at times. We saw some good looks. Um, I felt like the Florida game was probably one of the Flyers' best second period. Probably was their best second period um, that they played in the first seven games. Uh, As for, you know, obviously you could throw the Seattle game in there too, but that was also a blowout win. Um, You know, it's just hasn't necessarily trended the right way. They've had good starts. They've been able to score first. And the games where the Flyers haven't scored first, they scored first in five of their seven games and they won uh you know actually well no they won four of those four of those lost one um and right in a to shoot out against vancouver in the first game of the year that's it you know they, they've essentially gotten points in every game they scored first so that's another thing scoring first is good if they haven't if they aren't getting chances off the rush though they're not really generating much i'd like them to see more get more zone time, get puck possession, be able to generate in that into goals and things like that. Um, I, the one thing that was very good and very positive from this trip was the goaltending. Carter Hart had two great games, um, regardless of, you know, tonight and the stat sheet. You know, I mean, like Calgary in this game had a handful of good chances just, in, you know, in the later stages of the game. Hart had some great, great saves there in the second period that just kept him in the game he was really the biggest reasons why the flyers were even down one nothing at one point but for you know 32 saves on 36 shots and one of them being an empty netter and then another one just kind of to add to the stat sheet on on goudreau's goal um you know i thought harder had a pretty good game so that's one thing that was good obviously Hart, and then obviously jones against vancouver he had some good some again he was just one of the biggest reasons why the flyers even won that game he was fantastic so the goaltending was great on this trip um, there were some things that, that you like to see, things that you didn't. If the second period can really get cleaned up, that would be nice. You're going into, now, you go one home game. Then you got Pittsburgh and then the Capitals. Those are not, you know, easy games right there. We know how that's going to be. And those are both on the road. Before that, Tuesday, like at home, 
of the Coyotes, who are winless right now. Uh, they are eighth in the Central Division. They play tomorrow at one o'clock against Carolina. They are 0-7-1 on the year, and they have scored the fewest amount of goals in the league at 12, and they have uh, given up 37. That's tied with Chicago um, for the most in the Central Division. So they haven't necessarily looked great. Um, obviously, they are a very struggling team at the moment, and you need to take care of business against them at home on Tuesday night because that is essentially give, give me points when you're looking at the schedule when you have Pittsburgh and Washington on Thursday and Saturday and you want to take care of that. So if I'm the Flyers, look, it wasn't their best game tonight, but the road trip was very positive. Um, obviously not having Ellis, having three games in four nights, you won two of them, you won your first back-to-back instant of the year. It happens. You're going to have offensive duds like this in games where they just kind of get you know, it, it just happens. It, it's hockey. It's a long season. It's an 82 game season, and seven games into the year, um, it's an issue when you're still having second periods like this, and you want to be able to keep this kind of flow going of playing a good solid 60 minutes. Um, but obviously, you're not going to do that every night and things like that. And I'm, obviously, I understand that as well. I don't want to make it like the Flyers are playing terrible because they have a winning record and. They are still playing good hockey. It's just the second period has not looked great for them, and you want to be able to fix that as the games go on. So, um, yeah, you know, I, I, the other day I put out a tweet, actually, that said I personally thought after that the first handful of games I haven't done the best job that I could have of giving my coverage of this team. If there is anything, I don't know if everybody who follow, watches me on YouTube follows me on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, whatever. If you didn't see that, let me know in the comments below if there's anything that you'd maybe like to see, anything you don't like, anything like that. I'm trying to, to be able to provide the best Flyers coverage um, that I possibly can. And, you know, I think adding some thoughts and takeaways to the end of it can help and obviously breaking down more play and things like that. But, um yeah, remember guys, podcast articles, those links are on my channel. As I said, Arizona on Tuesday, you want to take care of them. I'll talk to you all again soon, and uh, go Flyers.